At present, our image screen component is only passing a property called title down to each individual image detail. This prop is allowing our parent to configure a child component. But we also want to make sure that our parent of image screen also configures which image each of these should show as well. So we need to add in a second prop being passed from the parent down to each child. We're going to make sure that inside that additional prop, we specify exactly what image to show. So let's get to it. We're going to first begin inside of our image screen.js file. I'm going to find each of my image detail elements right here, and I'm going to add in a new prop to each one. Remember, because this is a prop that you and I are adding in to a component we created, we can use any name of prop that we want. It's only for components created by other people or by React Native itself that we have to use some pre-established prop name with a very specific spelling. So in this case, I think that a prop name that makes sense would be like image source. This is like the image to use or the source of the image that should be used. This could just as easily been something like image to use or image to show, whatever else you want it to be. It just has to be a name that makes sense to you and other engineers. But I'm going to call it image source. Okay, so inside this thing, we're going to provide a require statement to the image that we want this image detail to show. So once again, we're going to put in require, and then a relative path to the image we want to show from our assets directory. So once again, I'm going to go up one directory, up another directory, into assets, and then I'll get forest.jpg. Okay, so now we can duplicate this prop down to the next two as well. So I'll do a copy of just image source and paste it once and paste it twice. We can then update the second image to instead show beach. So I'll do beach and then the last one to do mountain instead. All right, so that looks good. I'm going to save this file. You'll notice that my code jumps. That's just my code formatter. Everything you see here is 100% equivalent to what you saw before. It's just formatted slightly differently. So now we can go into our image detail and we can receive this brand new prop that we've added in. So inside of image detail, that new prop of image source should be inside of this props object. Rather than just accepting that on faith, however, let's do a quick console log of that props object just to make sure that's the case. So I'll do a console log of props right there and then save the file once again. Remember, to see this console log actually run, we have to navigate to the image screen component inside of our application. So over here, I'll go to image demo, and then I should be able to flip back over to my terminal, which is where all of our, all of our console logs appear. And now we can see image source, image source, and image source. You'll notice that they have kind of strange values here of three, four, and five. That's totally fine. These values you see right here are essentially an identifier that's been added in thanks to that require statement. The identifier is pointing to some particular image. So the property name is definitely image source, and we can essentially just believe that we are getting the correct image in here. All right, so now back inside of our image detail, now that we know that we've got that new prop inside of our props object, we can use that as our source right here going off to the image rather than the hard-coded require statement. So I will delete that hard-coded require statement and replace it with props image source. Again, image source, we're using that because that's the name of the prop that we passed in from the parent. Okay, so let's save this and we can do a final test here. So back inside of my device, I'll go to image demo and there we go. So we now created a separate reusable component and we used it three separate times. Each time we passed in a different set of props to customize how the component behaved. We're going to use this prop system a incredible number of times throughout this course to customize child components that we create. So now that we've got a better idea of how this prop system works, let's take a quick pause right here and move on to our next subject in the next video.